Are you guys tired of spending $15, $20 on chatterbaits? I know that I am and there's times where I want a specific color chatterbait that I can't buy in the store. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make chatterbaits at home using do it molds. For anybody new, thank you for clicking on today's video. My name is Matt Luna. I make tackle making videos, on the water fishing videos, how to videos, tournament fishing videos, all kinds of stuff on the channel. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to click the subscribe button right now. In today's video, we're gonna be using the Dual Mold Sparky Jig Mold. I like this mold for my chatter baits. There's other molds other people use like the Poison Tail Jig Mold and also the Arky Head Jig Mold to make their chatter baits. There's other people using different ones as well. So there's a lot of different options when it comes to making chatter baits using Dual Mold. But in today's video, we're gonna be using the Sparky Jig Mold. So what you're gonna need in order to make these jigs is the Sparky Jig Mold or a comparable mold and a flipping hook in the four rot size or whatever size you prefer, but it needs to be a straight shank hook like a flipping hook. And then you're gonna need the STW 130 wire form from dual molds. It's gonna make it so that way we have the blade connected to the eye of the hook. Having this wire form or another one that's comparable is very, very essential. We are going to bend this wire form right here close to that round part. That round part is gonna be what allows us to put the chatterbait blade onto this jig without having to use a split ring. You want your pliers to be close to the round bend of the wire form. It's gonna make it so you can get the right angle and right length on this wire form once we cut it and you'll see that in a second. So I'm gonna bend it right now. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna cut this wire form right at that 90 degree angle. You wanna cut it right at the bottom of that bend. You don't need a long, area of it hanging off. You just need a little bit that's gonna come up right next to the hook. So all said and done, that's what you want the wire form to look like. So the first chatter bait that we're gonna make is the 3 8 which is that one right there. So what we're gonna do is we need to take our wire form and set it into the eye of our hook and then set it into our mold just like that. I like to put a wire keeper in these. This is the WD, WB400 wire form. And then that's basically how you have everything set up. We got the four out flipping hook in here. We have the wire form for the eye and then we have the wire form for the keeper. So now we're gonna be careful and close everything up. And we're gonna make sure everything is nice and flush right there, which it is pretty much. Not too much of a gap, and uh, we might have to clean up a little bit off of our jig, but that's not that big a deal. Since you have a lot of components in this mold, it's a good idea to have the mold on top of the lead pot, so that way everything gets nice and heated up, and you have a better chance of getting a complete pour. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is check for good flow. We got good flow. We're gonna go underneath, pour in our lead, and we'll check everything out. Okay, so we're gonna open up the mold. And we have a nice complete pour. We do have some flashing because the mold had a slight opening and everything, but that's nothing that we're not gonna be able to just clean up on our own when we get that sprue off. Sometimes when you make these, you're gonna have some flashing and uh, it's not that big a deal. You can make this thing look perfect with a little bit of TLC. So this time we're gonna be making a half ounce chatterbait. Process is exactly the same. We just gotta get our wire form and our hook inside of the mold. Then we're gonna put our wire keeper in there as, again as well. Just get everything into position, close up the mold. This time we have a nice closed up mold so we shouldn't have any flashing. Okay, so again, we got the mold up on top getting nice and hot. We're gonna check for flow, good flow. Put the mold underneath there, pour everything in, and we'll check everything out here in a second. Time to open up the mold and check everything out. Nice complete pour for the half ounce chatterbait. Gonna have to do a little bit of fixing right here around that eye the, of the hook or where that blade's gonna go. But overall, good looking jig so far. So as you can see, we got our half ounce right here and we have our 3 8 ounce right here. We have a lot of flashing on the 3 8 so We have a little bit down on the half ounce, but we have to pick out all the eyes because the eyes on these jigs got filled in with lead. That is one of the drawbacks of making them this way is that the eyes will get filled up with lead, but we can, we can fix that. We just gotta pick everything out, cut that lead out. The first thing that I like to do is I just like to file down any of the rough edges. I'll just look at the Sparky jig and just file down any of the rough edges. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. 
and then we still have that hook eye all filled in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this point of a hook and then I'm just gonna start poking it around and push that lead through the other side. That's really the only option you have. You can take a pair of shears and get underneath of it and kind of cut some of it loose, which will help give you some leverage and a nice weak point down there. But you just start poking around and eventually the uh, lead will go through that hook eye and you'll be able to open it up and clean everything out and have a good, nice opening like normal. So now as you can see, we have a nice opening in our jig to where we're gonna be able to put that blade on. Now when it comes to 3 8 with all the flashing, you're gonna have to take your shears and start cutting that flashing off. It's not hard to do. You just gotta get underneath there with the, with the, with the shears and start cutting everything off getting some of that big stuff off and then we'll take the file and uh, get it nice and cleaned up to where it's fishable. But same thing, we're going to have to get the lead out of the eye. And it's the same process, you're just going to start poking around with the hook point and just get everything pushed out the other side. That looks a lot better already. Now we just got to take the file and start cleaning it up even more. Okay, so now we got our final product. That thing looks good. It's ready for paint. So it's time to paint up our first set of chatterbaits. What we're going to do is we're going to use this custom color that I made myself. It has red and then black neon. So we're going to turn on our heat gun and get going. All right, so the second color that we're going to use is called Bruised Gill. This is a standard color that you can get. And it's a purple color because we're going to be making up some like June bug colored ones. And we got four more chatter baits that we're gonna make up like that. So we're gonna get going, I'm gonna turn on the heat gun. With this jig, you have paint on the eye of our hook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my nail and just pick off all that paint because I don't want any paint on this hook eye. I want it to move as free as possible. So I'm just gonna pick all that paint off of the eye of the hook here. So that way it's gonna be as clean as possible. So that way the blade, once it goes on there, has the most range of movement possible. So as you can see now, it's all cleaned up and now that blade is gonna have plenty of movement. And as you can see on the purple ones, we got the same issue going on. So I'm just gonna pick it off with my fingernail. You gotta do this before you bake. If you bake and forget this part, you're not gonna be able to get that paint off easily at all. Um, you just gotta do this before you get all that paint off or else you're in trouble. So there you go, we got a nice clean eye on a purple one. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on the rest of them off of camera so I don't bore you guys. The next part of the process is baking these jigs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set these chatter baits into the toaster oven so they can get baked. What this does is it makes the powder paint a lot more durable on the heads of these jigs. You want this to be durable so that way when you're banging it down on the bottom, your paint doesn't um, get chipped off as easily. I like to bake them twice, and I do it at 300, between 300 and 350, depending on the color that I'm using. These colors with a lot of that clear and the flake inside of it end up needing a little bit lower temperature. So I'm gonna do these around 325 for 20 minutes. Bruised gill color and custom red creation turned out really, really well. I'm excited to see how these chatterbaits look. So as you can see on the head of that chatterbait, there's a gap between the eye and the jig itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide a chatterbait blade underneath that and then pinch down with a pair of pliers that eye so it comes in contact with the head and that chatterbait blade can't come off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold on to this jig, slide the blade on, and then push it forward so now it's connected. And then in a minute, we're gonna take a pair of pliers and pinch that down. But we're gonna do a purple one first. So what we're gonna do is we're also gonna slide the bottom of the blade onto the eye, bring it forward so it falls down. And then there you have it. We have two blades on. We just gotta pinch down the eye and we'll be ready to put the skirt on. Okay, so I just have a pair of needle nose pliers and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get those pliers right underneath the eye and right on top of the eye and pinch it down. Now you guys can't see that very good, but I'm gonna show you here in a second that it's down and connected. And then as 
as you can see, the eye is all the way down. Now our chatterbait has nice action and that blade's not coming off. So we're gonna do one more of these on camera. As you can see, that eye is up above the head. So we gotta take the pair of pliers and we're gonna pinch it down. So there you have it. It is down and it is connected and that blade's not going anywhere. So these are the skirts that we're gonna be going with. We have the June bug color right here, and then we have this red and black right here. And I want you guys to pay attention. When I put these on, I'm gonna offset the skirt collars. You want the short side to be the side the hook point goes down into, and the longer side to be the top part of the collar. Just makes everything fit a little bit better and look a little bit better. But I think that these are gonna pair up really nicely and look really good all said and done. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna take the point of the hook and you wanna find the middle of your jig skirt and you're just gonna take the point of the hook and you're gonna go straight down. You're gonna thread everything up and then once that collar gets close to the head of the jig, you're gonna push everything up just like that and then you're just gonna to wanna to fan everything out, make everything look even and then that's what you want your jig to look like all said and done. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with the red jig skirt. Hook point's gonna go right into the middle. Thread everything down. Then when you get close to the collar, push everything up onto the head of the jig. And then just get everything nice and even. Spread everything out. And then that's how you should have your jig all said and done. So one of the things that you need to do when you're putting these skirts on is you need to fan everything out and get everything nice and even throughout the skirt. And the final look is gonna be just like this. I think that that looks really, really good and I think it's definitely gonna catch fish. So there's a final look at our red chatterbait. I think that thing is gonna get eaten pretty darn good over there at the Delta. I like the way that head color turned out on the jig and then the skirt just pairs up with it really, really well. And then those black chatterbait blades definitely do the trick as well. There's that June bug color, it turned out really, really good. Everything matches up really well. The black looks good for the blade. The purple pairs up with that June bug skirt really, really well. And that hook in there is a nice and mean sharp hook. I think that thing is gonna get eaten if they're on that purple. Well guys, as you can see, you can make awesome chatterbaits at your house, save yourself a bunch of money and make awesome custom colors that nobody else has there out on the market. Remember, use my affiliate link if you're gonna get any tackle making supplies from the Do It Molds website. Link is down in the description along with the product list. If you guys wanna see me make other chatterbaits in a different color, make sure to click on the video that's on the screen right now and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.